Good morning. I hope that you're all keeping well and coping okay. This morning's reading is from the Acts of the Apostles and concerns Philip and his meeting with the Ethiopian on his way home. In the New Testament, we meet up with two Philips. Philip was one of the original disciples of Jesus. And this one, who was one of the deacons ordained to do the practical work of looking after the poor, the widows and the orphans, who were part of the church in Jerusalem. So I'll read to you a story from Acts. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met a youth Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Candace, which means queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about? Is it himself or is it someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they travelled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptised? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptised him. When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and travelled about, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. In those days, Ethiopia was a prosperous and important kingdom, trading widely with the Middle East. The Candace was the queen mother and extremely important in Ethiopia. And this man was her envoy and right-hand man. He probably had been doing trading and diplomatic work on behalf of his government. And while he was in Jerusalem, he'd taken the opportunity of worshipping in the temple. It's highly unlikely that he was a Jew, much more likely to be one of those people that are called God-fearers, Gentiles that are drawn to worship the one God of the Jews. So he is reading from the scroll of Isaiah words which he couldn't understand, but which seemed to resonate with his soul. Philip has heard the voice of God telling him to find this man, to help him become a follower of Jesus, and by explaining that Isaiah's prophecy had been fulfilled by Jesus, he took the opportunity to give him the gospel's good news that Jesus was crucified and rose again from the dead to save us and bring us into the Father's presence. And this Ethiopian went away baptised and rejoicing. 
before Jesus ascended into heaven, pretty well the last thing that he did, said to his disciples was, you will be witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And this man, Philip, had obeyed this command by already ministering in Jerusalem and preaching to the Samaritans and now converting this Ethiopian who would have taken his new faith back to where his influence was at its greatest, to the wealthy and important hierarchy of the Ethiopian court, bringing faith in Christ deep into North Africa and beyond. Philip was the apostle to the Gentiles way before Paul had even been converted. As we speak of our faith to others, as we drop hints about who we serve, have we any idea how far that influence will travel, how far our words will reach? I think most of us believe that we have no effect on how others perceive the world. We think that our words fall flat, forgotten. I would like to tell you a very little tale from my own childhood, which just might make you think again about how much influence you have on another's spiritual life. I was brought up in a very unspiritual family, by which I mean we very rarely went to church, no one ever said prayers, and to my embarrassment when I went to secondary school, I had to sit down and teach myself the Lord's Prayer. But I had a Catholic aunt who frequently came to stay. One occasion she brought with her little Mary, her great niece, who was about three years old at the time, and I was about six or seven years old. When Mary was put to bed, in the spare room in my room, Mary and Auntie Sissy knelt down by the bed and said their prayers. And I stood and watched. And I hadn't a clue what they were doing. But very strangely, I knew that it was very, very important. Years later, Auntie Sissy will have had no idea that she had influenced my faith. Will have no idea that she spread the gospel and reached out to other people with the good news of Jesus Christ. Philip is known as an evangelist, a spreader of the gospel. But when he spoke to the Ethiopian, Philip thought he was simply obeying God's instructions not becoming important in the story of the faith. He was just being obedient. And I suspect that that is all God is asking of us today, to be obedient to his voice. When we are drawn to speak to someone, then we speak with gentleness, with consideration, with hope. When we hear of a problem, we are drawn to pray. And so we pray. In other words, we're obedient to God's voice. And that is all he asks of us. Sissy knew God expected her to encourage Mary to pray. So she obeyed him. She wasn't trying to show off. She was simply doing as she was told and the results were like ripples on a lake. Philip spoke to the Ethiopian, and the gospel was taken back into Africa. Can we spread the good news any wider than we already have? Let us pray. Father God, help us to listen to your voice and to obey. Help us to speak and act and think in accordance with your wishes and instructions. Help us, Lord, to be willing to tell others about the love of God shown to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen.